Okay, good morning. Today is Friday, the fourth day of Tishrei. We begin today a new chapter, a new letter of the Igris Kadesh, letter 20. And this letter is really a fundamental letter in Hasidus teachings. And the Alter Rebbe here discusses it brings a new understanding in the actual, the godliness that is in this physical world, the level of godliness that is in this physical world that we did not understand until now. And it wasn't brought in the Tanya until now, this idea. In general, al Rebbe did speak about the concept of what God, what is the ultimate will of God when we perform the mitzvahs is the bottom line is that we should perform it in the physical sense and in this physical world and in the way of doing it in action, not just in meditating and not just speaking about the mitzvahs, but to actually take have to fill in and wrap it around and take the candles and light the Shabbos candles and take the tzedakah, take the lulav, take the esr, all of those mitzvahs, the physical mitzvahs. Now we're doing things with physical things is important. And we explained until now that the reason why those things are so important is because ultimately this is the God's will. Meaning, he quoted the Medrash that says that God had a desire to have a home in this lowest of the worlds, in the lowest world. So in the lowest world means in this physical world, and not only in this physical world, but to do it also in action, in the physical actions. This is what we understood until now, but the bottom line, the understanding from this is that we are very, very low, and we live in a very low world, and yet God's desire is to have a home in this low world. Here comes the Alter Rebbe, and he, te he teaches us something new. And that is, not only is this low world the will, the desire that God wants to have a home, but really God's energy in this world this low world that seems the low world really is rooted in the creator, in God, in the highest essence of God. Meaning, if you compare this low world to higher spiritual worlds, where do they come from and where do we come from? Says so the Rebbe, they, the higher spiritual worlds, the angels, all of the other, the higher worlds, they come from a lower level within God than we do. And al explains this. And he says that because the only way, to, to say it in simple words, is this is the only world where we feel ourselves as independently existent, existing. Every other creature, the, the spiritual creatures, the angels, the, the higher, the souls, everything is felt. They feel that they're, in, they're dependent on something which is above them. The only one that feels as independently existence is this physical creatures, the physical creatures in this physical world. We feel that we are, we come from ourselves. The reason why this is happening is because deep inside us is rooted the ultimate being of God that is the ultimate self-independent existing entity, which is God. So only God, that, that he is truly independently existing, he, does, he is not dependent on anything else, only he is able to create such an entity that feels itself independently existing. 
Every entity that creates something, if it's not a truly independent entity, then in, when you create something, then you would have to have an imprint in what you create. You would be able to see in the creation where it's coming from. There is some kind of a connection. But that this physical world that is so low and feels itself independent, it is because in there is truly invested the ultimate essence of Hashem, that he is truly independent. And this, the Alter Rebbe brings here, this, by the way, the Alter Rebbe says this, said, said this, he wrote this letter in the last days of his life. And the Hasidim, the Friedrich Rebbe says, when the Hasidim got this letter, and they got a new understanding of what it means, godliness in this physical world, it gave a whole new excitement and appreciation of doing actual physical mitzvahs, because it's not just that we're fulfilling God's will in bringing the godliness in the lowest, but this itself, this physical world itself is rooted and is connected with the essence of Hashem more than any other spiritual thing. This is what the Alter Rebbe, it's a long letter, uh, tells in this letter, it's a long letter, and uh, it's going to take probably around 10 days, I believe, to finish this letter. But it gives us, like I said, very fundamental concepts in Hasidus. So, so here, let's look inside. <clears throat> the Alter Rebbe begins with a quote from the Pri Chaim. It's a book of Kabbalah, based on the teachings of the Arizal. Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, and he says, He and his life-giving emanations, his life, are one. And he, and his garmui means the garments, the guards, the causations, are one in them. What does it mean? What are we talking about? When we're referring to the 10 sephiris, the 10 attributes of Atsilus, which is the highest of the four worlds, the life giving emanations, these are the lights, and the garmoi, the garments, the causations, these are the vessels, the kalim of the sephiris. They are all divinity, and this is not the case in the world of Beria, Yetzira, and Asiya. Okay, so, so we need a little explanation. What, what are we talking about? So we know that we have the four worlds. Atzilus is the highest spiritual world that there, in this world, godliness is revealed. And then we have the other three worlds, Bria, Yetzira, Asiya. Bria is the world of creation. Yetzira is the world of formation. Asiya is the world of action. And each world, in turn, is, is a reduction of, God, of godly energy. It's felt more, it, you feel more the, the kalim, the vessels, the attributes are felt more. So each level, is lower and lower. So the world, but the, there is a major difference between the highest world, the world of Atsilus, and the other three. We live in the bottom, bottom, the Asiya, the Asiya, Gashmis, the lowest level. But um, there is a major difference between Atsilus and the other three. Atsilus is a world from the world. Atsilus means it's low, means near him, by him. A world of emanation, <clears throat> a world that is in with, connected with God. Now, <clears throat> what it says here is that, you know, each world has the 10 attributes. The attributes of the intellectual attributes, Chachma bin Adas, and the emotional attributes, the kind, Chesed, Vur, Tiferes, Kindness, just, Justice, uh, Judgment, Severity, and Tiferes, Beauty, all kind. We're not discussing this here, but we have the 10 attributes. <clears throat> in each world. So he says, 
there is a difference between the attributes, the way they are in the world of Atsilas and the way they are in the other worlds. In the world of Atsilas, you have the light and the vessels are one with Hashem. What does it mean the light and the vessels? <clears throat> the light and the vessels is like the body and the soul. Everything in the world has a body and a soul. Think about uh, <clears throat> think about a, a, a thought. You have the words, you're thinking, you have an emotion, you're thinking, they have the words of, of the emotion, and they have the, the feeling of the emotion. You have the body and the soul. Now, the here also, we're talking about you know, was the, the 10 attributes of God. You have the body, which are the actual attributes, meaning there is the attribute of kindness, the attributes of severity. Each one has a different characteristic. And you have the soul, which is the godly generic energy, so to speak, that is equally in all of them. So we would understand perhaps that the energy, the, the light of these attributes are one with God. <clears throat> but here it comes and says in the Pri Yitzchayim that not only the energy, not only the light is one with God, but also the, the vessels themselves, meaning the characteristics of these attributes, these are also one with God. And this needs explanation how it could be. So the Alter Rebbe continues. <clears throat> we need to understand. Let's be clearly understood how the Ein Sof is one with his causations, the Kalim, the vessels of the Sephiroth. <laughs> For the Kalim, the vessels are limited and finite. As it stated, it is stated in Eitz Chaim that they are finite. Amnam Sadal Terebe answers, Akhavamehi, Leima Shein Elekus Livoi Yeish Meaim Kemoya Ein Sof. So, however, it says the intention of the statement that Ein Sof is one with his Caitlin, with his vessels, is to say that they are divinity with regard to creating something of nothing, just as the Ein Sof is capable of doing. So what it says is that the vessels of Attilus also, they do create something out of nothing, meaning <clears throat> they're able to bring a creation in a way that the, the, that the creation shall not feel and shall not recognize where it's coming from. And not merely by way of evolution from Ilo, the cause, to Olul, the effect. There is, those are the two ways of creations. You have the way of Yesh uh, is something from nothing, and you have the way of ilav alul cause and effect. So create creating something in the cause and effect that is easier understood than creating something from nothing. So it says here that the spheres of Atsilus also have the ability, even the vessels of Atsilus having them the ability to create something from nothing. And this is why they say that even the vessels are one with God in the in 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 in, the, in respect of the ability of being able to create something out of nothing. So the Alter Rebbe continues and says, but we see somewhere else of Moshe Kosovaramak, Moshe Kodavira, which is the known Kabbalist. He says, Indian Ishtalshalus, Ilava Olu. He says, for the statement of the Rabbi Moshe Kodavira, that creative developments in the Sephiris take place by way of Ila and Alul. And so is this stated in the sacred Zoya, Parshas Bereshis. So here it seems to be saying something different than what we just said. We just said 
that the sephiris, the attributes of the world of Atzilus, is able to create something from nothing. And there, Rabbi Moshe Kodavira writes, and so it is in the Zohar, he says that there is there, it's not a yesh me'ayin, it, it is ilav ha'olun, it is cause and effect. So it's not something from nothing. So it, Al-Tareb explains, Ainu be'ishtal shalu sa'sfiris ba'sfiris atzma. This refers to the evolution of the sefiris within the sefiris themselves, whereby one sefira evolves from another. For example, the Bina evolves from Chachma. So, in other words, al Terebe is saying that this is a different thing what we mentioned earlier. When we said about creating something from nothing, it is about creating in something from, for, the, for the next world, for the lower world. But here, what, what, what Rabbi Moshe Kodavir mentions about Ilav Olo, as an effect, it is the attributes one from another within themselves. Pchina Sakevin, Shenikro is Beli Ma Besefer Yetzirah. With respect to the Kalim, which are termed Beli Ma, without anything in Sefer Yetzirah, in the Book of the Formation. So the text that reads the 10 spheres without anything their measure is 10. So what is he saying? Because they are not in the category of a substance, yesh, nor of, an, of a nature that is apprehensible to created beings. So he's talk, talking about in the, the inner part, the interior part of the sephiris are totally not understandable, not apprehensible. Just like the Ein Saif, whom thought cannot grasp it at all. So, so to are the kalim of the sephiris, they're called bli ma, without anything meaning that even the Kalim of Atsilus they have without anything tangible, without grasping. And this is what it means when it says in the Torah, it is written, and my face shall not be seen. What does it mean, my face shall not be seen? So he explains the Pnimius, the inner part, the inner part of Hashem, the inner part of the Kalim, that cannot be seen. And even Moshe Rabbeinu, says, did not achieve that inner part of the Kalim. Says in the Moshe Rabbeinu, Allah v'shalem, v'asa gosoi, o'yom y'perek elya de netzach de ze'ir anti. The prophecy and apprehension of Moses, our master, Moshe Rabbeinu, peace to him, related to the upper rank of netzach of ze'ir anti. Netzach is one of the attributes this is the fourth of the ten attributes, uh, fourth of the seven, and uh, Midos, which is the seventh from the ten attributes. So in these, it says from that level, Netzach, the higher level of Netzach, of Ze'er Ampin, Ze'er Ampin means a small face, which refers to the six the Midos, the six at, uh, emotional attributes. So Moshe Rabbeinu was able only to achieve from the higher part of Netzach. And in the evolution, the Olol, before it emerges as a distinct entity, is encompassed by its Ila. And is in a state of utter self nullification in relation to it, such that just as a ray of the sun that loses its independent identity within the sun. So, this is what we're talking about the Ila, the Olo, that are connected and they're nullified. And no, it doesn't matter how many 
numerous contractions will not help to bring to bring out to bring about a physical a physical object. To come about from evolution, from the spiritual abstract intelligence, even from the angels. In other words, you cannot, in order to create a physical object, it doesn't matter how many times you contract the spiritual object, you can never, ever come to be, create a, an actual physical independent object. The only the closest you can get is to get the spirit, the spirit of the, the physical object. And it will only come into being as a result of the, the radiated involvement, the spirit of an animal. That derives from the face of the ox of the celestial chariot. Commotion is commotion is as explained elsewhere. So what is it, what is the Alter Rebbe telling us here? He's telling about that the the evolving from the spiritual world for this physical world. It cannot be. It cannot be in a way of ila ve'amol, meaning the cause and effect. Because the physical object is such an independent existence, it's like you're going to have a teacher, uh, an architect, is going to explain everything how to create a building, how to make an, a mansion, and he's going to go down to all the bottom, the details, explaining everything how to create to the last, to the last nail, and he will sit with the students and they'll explain, explain him everything. It's all in the head. They cannot bring about one brick to become into being. So to create something from nothing, this is comes from a much, much higher source. And that is the ultimate essence of Hashem that can create this physical world to, to become something real physical. This is what al Rebbe begins this letter. It's the end of today's year. And as I mentioned before, this is the Alter Rebbe said this in the time of the last days of his life in this world. And you can imagine the Alter Rebbe reached such great heights in the spiritual levels throughout his life. And, and, and is literally a, a spiritual man. And he was able to achieve the greatest levels. And yet, in the last days of his life in this world, what is the teaching? What is the understanding that he achieved when he's teaching us in this letter? Is that we should really appreciate the greatest levels of godliness that is right here, right next to us. Uh, we take an object and we use it out in a godly way, in a spiritual way. We're using it for Hashem, using it for good. We reveal the very essence of Hashem, the very essence of godliness that is in this physical world. And that gives us a whole new appreciation in what it means that we, the mitzvahs that we do in the physical world. So thank you so much for joining today. As that Hashem will continue on Sunday. This Shabbos is a special Shabbos called the Shabbos Teshuva. Shabbos between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. You're all invited to join. We can have a fabrengen. And a wonderful Shabbos. Nagmar Hasim Ateve.